right, let's try this again. Welcome back to another episode of the Um So Podcast. This is a Q&A, as uh, I've been doing these Tuesday Q&As, uh, answering some questions from the grams from you guys. And uh, it's been fun. It's been fun getting to do this, getting to interact more, doing that type of stuff with you guys. As I'm still getting my office stuff set up here, let me know what you think about this as, I don't know, trying to make it look more pro? I don't know. Anyway, <clears throat> so every week I'm going to go to Instagram and ask you guys questions and then I'm going to hammer them out here. So this week, hit me with questions below in the YouTube comments, and I will answer some of those questions for next week's Q&A. So before we dive into that, we have some sponsors, and let's go ahead and rip through them. You need nutrition coaching? Quit being a dildo and uh, call up Hybrid Performance Method. Their shit's awesome. I've worked with them for a long time. It's one of the reasons I've made as much progress as I, ha as I have, and it's just simple uh, accountability. Uh, they do a macros approach. And they've been able to work with me on no matter like what my, what macros I'm trying to hit, whether that's been keeping things relatively carnivore or keto or any of those type of things. So it's been a nice, let me zoom in just a bit. it's been a nice, uh, it's been nice having that guidance and uh, working with Greg Sutt uh, as our nutrition coach, man, it's really been good to figure out how how I can start implementing carbohydrates back in as someone who's avoided them for a really long time. I've been really happy with the progress. My body's getting leaner and really no complaints overall. So if you want to get serious and figure out some nutrition stuff, my recommendation is get with hybrid performance method, uh, sign up, check out their programs, check out their coaching, and you're going to be better off for it. Use hybrid performance method, use code. I'm so save yourself 5%. Man, that's not the best ad I've ever cut. A little off today. <clears throat> but, all right. We're going through it. Also, we have Mind Bullet. Mind Bullet is a Kratom-based product. So many things I'm fucking with. Mind Bullet is a Kratom-based product that uh, I've been really happy to use as a stimulant, as a pre-workout, as a nootropic, uh, as also some type of pain relief. I've been working with Chris and Mark Bell, who own that company. And I've worked with them for a long time now, and they've recently started sponsoring the podcast. So if you're looking for something to kind of take some of the nags and nagging inks and pains away, you want something that's more natural, that is going to work. How would I describe it? Like some mixture of caffeine. It, it's almost like taking what used to be in powerlifting, this uh, like ECA stack. So ephedrine, caffeine, and acetaminophen or aspirin. Um, I'm not sure if those two work together, but either way, uh, it, it's, it's kind of that type of setup. So you're going to get some form of a stimulant. You're going to get a little bit of pain relief and anti-inflammatory. And you're going to get some focus to it. So I've been using this as a great pre-workout. I really like the way it feels. Mindbullet.com. Use code UMSO. Save yourself some money. I think 20%. And uh, head over there and check it out. Mark and Chris Bell have put together another great product for us. So happy to support those dudes and really happy using this product. Oh, why well, am I out of breath already today? Oh. We got PowerDot. PowerDot is a smart e-stem. Really happy with it. You guys know about it. You're crazy if you're not using it. No matter really what you've got coming, recovering from surgery, recovering from training, all those type of things, uh, PowerDot really is going to be... This is going to be one of your best bets for rebuilding muscle mass post-surgery, getting things to turn back on, and get things working. So head over to PowerDot. Use code UMSO. Save yourself 15% on any of their devices. And get with the program, man. Also, for the month of July, they're doing a giveaway and a contest called PowerDot's Grand Fondo. You can sign up via Strava at PowerDot.com slash Grand Fondo. And, uh, or sorry, Grand Tour. And, um... It's, it's a cycling style thing. There's a handful of people promoting it. Myself, Lance Armstrong, um, just to name two cyclists. I mean, basically, if you combine the two of our cycling abilities, you have seven Tour de France victories. That's a lot. It's more than anyone else. So think about that. 
but I'm excited about it. It's a minimum of 100 miles for the month of July to enter, and there's a ton of stuff up for grabs, including 10,000 bucks cash. Now, they also have another challenge at 750 miles for the month, which is brutal. That's doing 25 a day. So I'm definitely going to see how many miles I can bang out in the month of July. It's also going to be tricky because we're going to be on the road. So hold on and stick with me. You follow Strava. My name is uh, M. Vincent. And uh, follow along. Make it part of the party. Anyway, I've been enjoying the cycling, and PowerDot has been a really, really lovely uh, tool for, for helping that. So. If you can, check those dudes out. Use code UMSO. Save yourself 15%. Also, dietary stuff has been big for me, man. I'm working with hybrid as far as my goals on nutrition. But as far as the actual food goes, Eat Right Foods has been keeping it super, super solid. Uh, They're a meal delivery company. They're based out of Buffalo, New York. Really great guys. They're doing free delivery to all the East Coast. And they're doing $25 flat rate to anywhere else in the country. So if you're using code UMSO, you're going to save... 10%, which means you get 10 meals for 90 bucks. That's a pretty dosh darn good deal. And I recommend it. Uh, we've been doing their bulk protein. Their salmon is super, super good. Um, and I'm not that big of a fish eater, especially like this, but man, just doing that with rice. We've been doing bulk protein. We cook our own rice. And uh, really, most meals for us typically end up more vertical diet uh, style now. And Eat Right Foods has really helped kind of keep things in check and keep things consistent. And that's really where the big changes happen. If I'm asked what changes have happened to me nutrition-wise that have changed my body composition over the last couple months, it's really the consistency. I mean, you figure this is the longest I've been home. This is probably the most consistent I've been with diet, with cardio, with all those type of things. So it's going to make a big difference. So Eat Right Foods, use code UMSO, save yourself 10% 10% and get it delivered to your house. Man, also, hey, Brand Goods, that's us. Just released our new floral gray shorts, which are pretty baller, and they're almost gone. Um, this week on Hate Brand, we're going to do a little bit of a giveaway. Just a little bit of one. We've got some portable battery packs that we made, and so every order that goes out Thursday and Friday will get... A free battery pack with any order over 50 bucks. So, thank you guys. Check out some of the new stuff we got. We got a bunch more new coming. And Habit Coffee. You drink coffee? I drink coffee. I drink Habit Coffee. (laughs) Anyway, uh, your new habit. Head over there. Scoop some stuff up. Check it out. Get uh, get some coffee coming your way, man. That's uh, that's our coffee company. I'm really proud of it. And uh, really, really proud of the coffee. Try our Guatemalan, and uh, let me know what you think. I think it's as fucking good as anybody else out there making coffee. <sighs> Let's dive into these questions. See what's what's we got. F, I'm sorry, CF Webb, as a fellow guy with broken knees, how do you warm up uh, yours with Power Dot before cycling? So typically warm up, I'm not using the power dot beforehand. It would really depend on how I feel. Now, if I was super sore and uh, really just needed to get blood flow and stuff like that, yeah, power dot would be awesome. If I have been having pain, I've used the power dot as like a tens feature beforehand. And now that seems to uh, be really nice. Uh, that does eliminate some pain if I'm having actual joint pain. So that's really what I'm doing. The other way I'm really warming up my knees, I'm still going through my hip circuit uh, that I got from Squat University that's really been helping. And just making sure that I'm giving myself some proper warm up time. Like once I get on the bike, like, you know, just spinning up for a little bit, five or 10 minutes, just to kind of get heart rate flowing and get things moving. Like I know I'm stiff every day when I get on. And so being able to take that time to spin up and feel a little bit better uh, just get the hip and everything moving. And then I kind of listen to the body depending on like what type of effort I want to put in that day for the ride. So that's, that's kind of what I've been doing. A pencil 98, any tips, moves in recovery specifically for hip and knee joint causes a done fuck because of the done fucked up. Yeah. So knees, um, I recommend like TKEs are really, really great. I think they do help kind of bulletproof your knee. I think they eliminate a lot of pain. I think there is uh, a lot that you can do there to really get quad back online. You can also 
occlude it. I, I think TKEs are a great recovery style uh, system that you should be using, or not system, but work uh, uh, I don't know, exercise is the correct word. I feel so fat and out of breath. I'm so sorry you guys have to just listen to me breathe like that for fuck's sake. So, yeah, TKEs are great. Um, as far as hips and other things like that, uh, really there is some uh, hip hinge movements and airplane style hip openings that I would recommend as being really, really great. Um, if you look at my YouTube, I've got a video where I'm going to work with Dr. Aaron at uh, Squat University. And we come up with a bunch of really good stuff for the way my knee and hip need to be treated before and after workouts. Uh, the big thing is you got to be consistent and just do it all the time. Uh, I think a big mistake people make with rehab stuff is once they kind of feel better, they stop. And if these are things that really get you out of problem territory whenever you're weak and in pain, why would these things not be something to continue doing to further bulletproof your to further bulletproof yourself once you're kind of out of those woods. So Fergus OB. Uh, what's the best way to get back into training after a series of major injuries and operation? Yeah, I can see that kind of being a barrier, right? Of like what to do for me. I never, I never stopped. So I never stopped getting back into it. Like I never quit. So even if that meant scaling down so much that all I was able to do that day was really spend 20 minutes on the assault bike, just moving. Like we're not talking about intensity or even walks. The first thing I would recommend is like three 10 minute walks a day. I think that's going to be your best bet for, for making some standard progress going forward. Um, that's where I would start. And then as I would just continually build up from there, remember that, like rehab and stuff like that, be smart about it, man. Cause like, there's not going to be this single moment, single day of training that boom, I'm strong again, or I'm strong or any of those type of things, but you can absolutely push too hard coming back from something and fuck it all up and cost yourself weeks and months and more pain. So air, air on the side that keeps you training is, is the biggest thing I would recommend. Stevie Guns, what's your diet like nowadays? So my diet's still somewhere between really carnivore and uh, vertical diet, if you don't count the cookies that I've been eating at night. But I'm also doing a shit ton of cardio. So as long as the scale isn't an issue, I'm still intermittent fasting. Um, I've been eating a lot of cookies at night. I've been kind of getting stoned and eating cookies, whatever, man. Uh but other than that, yeah, it's just mostly meat and rice, man. And and I've been really happy with the way it feels. I like the way my body digests it. My body moves it quickly. My body, I feel recovered. And you know, I really base the amount of carbohydrates I'm taking in on my activity level. Uh, protein and fat are pretty consistent. So based on how much time I spent on the bike or did I bike and train or what were my total hours really of, of operation this week. So like Saturday, I did a long ride and it was over three hours. Um, so you figure calorically for me, that's probably another 23, 2400 calories. And that's expensive. Like, so I, I, I'm going to eat and not really stress too much about it. So you figure that plus my normal maintenance puts me at like almost 6,000 calories for that day. And at some point, like I just need to eat. I'm not trying to lose weight anymore. So Keeping those goals in check seemed to also help a lot for me. But that's mostly what I'm eating. Rice, meat, cookies. <laughs> Robin Neville, what's up, brother? Or Knievel. He's a handsome boy. Muscular imbalances from surgeries. Shit won't grow help. First thing, dude, Power Dot. I think that's going to help you a ton. Power Dot plus occlusion. Oh, man. Power dot plus some occlusion training to get things to turn back on. Um, the other thing I really didn't expect to change as much as it has really has been the cycling. And I think it's just this low, low impact, high repetition. I can just fill my legs with blood um, that they're just getting so much more work. One of the things I didn't expect from the cycling was the change in like vascularity of my legs and uh, the rest of my body. And uh, that's been an interesting adaptation. I like so. Man, that would be my, my biggest thing, Robin, is is start doing that and start figuring out like what you can do hypertrophy wise. Start 
doing occlusion to fill it up, make sure you're using, you know, power dot. As long as you're getting that hard contraction from your leg, we should be able to make some progress. Now, if you're not being able to contract, then, then we have some other things we need to address first. So let's start there. I, I would find some type of a muscle stim unit. I do believe power dots is the best and, uh, go from there, dude. I hope your legs feeling better. Tim Tuvia McCain. Hi, I'm debating knee replacement. What things are you no longer able to do? Um, there isn't anything that I'm not able to do now on the fake knee that I was able to do prior to knee replacement. Like I was in bad fucking shape. So I had knee replacement because it was really this last, this last fucking move for me, man, of getting out of pain and trying to get back to some type of normal living. Uh, I think, I think we did a pretty good job with that. Uh, but I mean, there's really, there's really nothing I'm missing right now. There's definitely still stuff I'm nervous about, but I think that's more of a time. And the more time keeps going on, the happier and happier I am with it. It's just not a quick rehab. Like it is fucking 18 months, man, for, for things to just tissue wise to return kind of back to normal. Like my leg is still chilling out, even though I can run, I can jump, I can sprint. Uh, all those things aren't great but I can cycle a ton. It's not an issue on hikes. Like I'm not having to stop because my knee is bothering me. Uh, and my hip has gotten a lot, a lot better, whether that's also just due to time or the exercises or rehab or backing off, whatever it is, it's, it's feeling good too. So for people that ask me, like, when did you know it was time to have knee replacement? It was because I was really at, at the end of my rope. Like I was in a bad place and, uh, things weren't going to get better for me mentally. I was gonna probably start being shitty and that's not the route I want to go uh chronic pain's a motherfucker um so whatever you can do to avoid that and stay out of that realm that's really a big one and what I would recommend so just be smart about it damn and like realize that you're making big progress steps instead of fucking this isn't a short-term fix like a knee replacement or not knee replacement. Like if you can still do all those things and you're just tolerating pain, then I mean, run it till it breaks. <laughs> I don't know, man. You know, I knew that I didn't have a lot of options left. So me going, me not being able to go up and down stairs was not ideal. Sam Baird, bed rack or camper top for a rooftop tent, roof tent. I like the camper shell. Cause I like being able to keep my fridge and other stuff locked in the back. I like the drawer system. I like knowing that all that stuff is weatherproof and secure. It helps me keep more things as the way we travel and not have them in the truck with us. Uh, that's the same reason I just added this cargo box is to kind of, you know, add a little bit more, um, just storage that we can keep stuff. We don't need every day out of the, out of the back seat of the truck. Otherwise, the back seat of the truck just gets completely stocked, stopped full. Stopped full. That's the way people say it. Yeah, completely crammed full. <laughs> Mikey in Hawaii, are you taking a bike on your road trip? Uh, yeah, yeah, I am. Current kind of debate is which bike do I take? Because there's mountain bike, there's gravel bike, and a road bike. And I think, I think the Niner Magic Carpet Ride, my full suspended gravel bike, is the one I'm going to take. Because I know I'm not going to go hunt out any crazy single track as, again, risk of injury just doesn't seem worth it on the road trip. Um, so I'll be doing miles anyway. So I picture more gravel roads, uh, stuff like that through national forest or parks and getting miles that way the best I can. It's, and the Niner really does provide me the best options for both of those. So. The Niner is what I'll be hitting the road with, man. Excited. I think I think so. I think so. I think I'm going to change out cassettes on the rear end. Give me a little bit better gearing for uh, some steepness if I run into it. Yeah. I think that's that's the overall plan, man. Pretty pretty excited about it. Gray Oliver, is it worth buying a sauna purely for health benefits and recovery? Well, I don't know what other reasons you would buy a sauna. Those are the two reasons. 
So for me, yeah, that's those are the two reasons. I've also been really happy with with my sauna. Um, Sunlighten makes the one that I I use. I've been very happy with it. I would would I purchase another one if this one went away? I think at some point I wouldn't be in a big hurry for it though. I've had it. I've had it for a while. I like it. It's a great tool. Um, if those type of things, if if you enjoy a sauna and a sauna makes you feel better, I think theirs is great. I th- I think it has great health benefits and recovery benefits. So, is that guy over there? Is there an app you use for finding good biking trails? So with that, what I use is uh, this app called All Trails. All Trails works really great. I don't have any affiliation. So between All Trails, Ride with GPS, and Strava, I can usually find something to go hit and ride. So that helps. Use those. I also use iOverlander to find campsites. Caleb Smith 12, biggest mistake that you learned the most from? <sighs> hmm. Probably failure of my bike shop. You know, that closing and that not making money and it not being this, if you build it, they will come. Like that's, that's, that's just not, not how it works. And it's <laughs> sure shit, not how it worked out for me. Um, that was a big one. So having to realize it didn't make any money to walk away from it, to avoid those traps. But I learned, you know, what it takes to open a brick and mortar uh, business. I learned dealing with customers. I learned, you know, staying timely and some expenses and stuff I did badly that has carried over into running hate, but not enough that I would ever open another brick and mortar business. So I, I would say that's probably the biggest thing I've ever learn from um the rest of them have just been small mistakes that i'm willing to listen to and that's something else i talk about is this like learn to fail man and like that's why i look at like bmx guys or skateboarders or any of your extreme athletes or fucking athletes in general right that what you learn how to do really well is fall and fail and those type of things that's you learn how to fail and fall or do any of those type of things early enough so that you can get out of the mistake that you made early enough to not let it just fucking destroy everything. So I've gotten better at recognizing failure earlier so that I can hit the brakes, change direction, and then make a better decision, whether that's product drop, whether that's people I'm working with, whether that's companies or any of those type of things like that. I'm not scared of failure as you want to listen to it. Failure is what keeps you fucking in line and failure is what keeps things driving forward. And failure is what you learn from success is a terrible teacher. So, I mean, failure is a part of the game. You can't, you can't avoid them. That's for sure. as Shit. Still figuring out this mic. So I, I like it. Uh, I just don't like hearing myself breathe as much. And that's probably, it's as much a setting issue as it is anything else. So I apologize for me being less than professional, but I'm trying. Look at this cool video, man. That looks sharp, doesn't it? Yeah. There's video now on YouTube for anyone who wants to listen to these that way or watch them or whatever it is you like doing. Nick Merv, beard hair products. What's in the bathroom for you? Johnny Slicks. It's a buddy of mine, Nick Kumulato's business partner, Johnny. Makes good stuff. Johnny Slicks. That's who we use for hair care. Beer shit. Pretty cool. Make great oil. Make stuff smells good. Your ladies think you smell good. Or your dudes can think you smell good. I don't care who thinks you smell good, but you'll smell good. And they make pomade. They make a bunch of great stuff. So Johnny Slicks. Boom. Andrew Zarek. Best way to prepare to train for stone lifting. Get real fucking strong. Do Atlas Stones, do Big Carries, do Zerker Carries, do Stone Lifting. <laughs> uh, I would say like a bent over pin lay row is is good. Because um, you end up in a weird position with Atlas Stones. It's not really a deadlift because your arms are going to be so involved. And then maybe some front squats. But other than that, Stone Lifting and Atlas Stones probably really your best bet. They're fun though, man. Their, their cool history and cool journey. I love doing them. I love, 
I really love that during, you know, my, my, let's say healthier years, I was able to, you know, carry the Husafel stone and I was able to, uh, lift the, the, uh, Denny stones and I'm able to pick up and press the Inverse stone before they, you know, while before the shit got it, man, I don't mean that in a weird way of like I did it before it was popular. I just had been interested in this shit for a long time. And that's why I've stayed within strength. And so getting out there to do those type of things long before was really, really cool. Um, I'm excited that I can kind of still get to dabble a little bit, but those places are in great, great, amazing locations. And if you're going to do any stone lifting, I highly recommend it. Check out uh, Ryan Stewart uh, is on Instagram. It's a buddy I used to throw with, and he's he's big into the stone lifting stuff, so he may be a better bet. T. Maskell, bike shop suggestions. Bike shop suggested Trek Marlin. Any other brands? I should, uh, Trek or Marin? Any other brands I should check out? Uh, all of them. Uh, I ride a Specialized. I ride a Niner. I have a Felt. Uh, there, there's a ton of great bikes out there. There's a ton of great direct-to-customer stuff. Canyon um, is one. Uh Polygon is another alchemy bike seems to make good stuff. There's so many things available right now, but if it's your first bike, I don't recommend buying online as you just don't know enough. Um, I'm pretty comfortable in ordering what I think is going to work for me at this point. But if you're, if you're at a novice level, like I recommend going to meet a bike shop and talk with stuff. I put a YouTube video up on how to buy your first bike and how to talk to people at the shop and what you should look for. So, uh, check that out. Uh, G to the red. I, I don't want to tell you my fucking, I don't know my, my macros. <sighs> why don't, why would, why would you want to fucking know my macros? Like my macros are based on what I've done. Like they're based on my metabolic case. Like we're not the same that like, you have to figure out your own shit. Like you can get a relative ballpark, but that's it. And so much of nutrition and diet and success is going to be you figuring out what works for you. Like there's some big picture stuff. Like no one's going to be able to eat fucking cheeseburgers all the time. So scratch that off the fucking list. But man, I, I just feel like questions like that. Like when you're asking someone you follow for their specific stuff, like it's, it doesn't apply to you. Like that's, that's why you work with a coach. Like you can't just be like, well, Matt's macros were this. I'm going to go with those. Like, dude, just fucking track everything you do for the next two weeks. And if you lost weight, add more. (laughs) If you gained weight, take some away, figure out what you're eating on a week to two week basis that keeps you at the exact same weight. And that is your maintenance calories. And then build around there to go up or down or whatever it is you'd like to accomplish. You want, well, that's why I work with a fucking coach. Cause I'm not that smart. Hybrid performance method, real smart people. T Smith, 89, 89. <laughs> what fucking question is that? When they make a normal shirt, a muscle shirt. I, Yes. Um, Morgan Sweeney, here's a better one advice on when to look, uh, at testosterone replacement for my late thirties, uh, immediately. Uh, I, I suggest that most men should definitely start getting blood work looked at as they kind of break into their thirties, just to see where they are. And if things are low, start fixing it. Uh, if they're normal, great pat yourself on the back, but continue to measure those things. And like, There's just not an excuse anymore to feel bad because of low testosterone or hormones. We can, this is something we can address and we can fix, whether that's through your doctor or fucking through normal ways. Uh, I say normal ways, but through the normal means. Um, it's just no, yes, get the fuck back on test. (laughs) Why would you not be? I just, I just don't understand. Like if you have lower test, you should get, you should be on test. It makes everything better. It makes sex drive better. It makes appetite better. It makes sleep better. It makes cognitive function better. It makes joints feel better. Uh, why would you not? Drew Stookbury, which bike do you prefer most as far as just having fun? 
Oh, man, there, it doesn't really work that way. I like riding single trail. Like, I like being a mountain biker and ripping that way. It's super, super fun. Like, what we did down in Bentonville a couple weeks ago was super rad. But I also like riding. I like miles, and I like being on the gravel. I like these long kind of adventure routes, which I wouldn't want to do on my mountain bike. Uh, mountain bikes are typically shorter days, a little bit more intense, with more ups and downs and trails and technicality of riding. Um things I need to jump over or get around or what have you but the gravel stuff's still fucking cool too and I really like this idea of bike packing and being able to get into that so if right now I had to get rid of everything except one I would keep my mountain bike but that would be really fucking hard to do Pearson Adam 12 any home renovation projects are you nervous about doing yourself all all of them I'm, I'm bad at all of them uh, and it's just due to a lack of, uh, lack of experience. And so with that comes, you got to fucking fuck stuff up for a while. You got to be bad at it and trying to get better, uh, trying to just not be scared of fucking things up and realizing I have time to fix them. And that's really where the biggest thing is. I don't want to create a bigger problem, nor do I want to have someone come in and have to finish something I did halfway, but I take it better at things. So I guess I'm just going to have to suck that up and deal with it. Um, our backyard project with like doing the fence and gate and hardscape and uh, a little garage, that's going to have to be full on. Someone else gets hired to do it uh, probably as well as paint the outside of the house, little interior stuff. Like I don't mind doing, I am trying to get more comfortable with fixing and dealing with shit on my truck. But again, that's still not, not great. DIY is not, <laughs> yeah yeah i i want to get better at it so I'm, I'm trying man but the backyard's a lot squats for donuts do your arms have grippy tread need more lightweight than my boots or trail runners um so they do make one with a bit more grippier tread than what mine have mine are a bit older now they're a couple years um i i've been very very happy with those shoes um, I'll probably replace them with another very similar pair. So I know they do make a little bit more of a trail version now that's got some, uh, some more grip tread to it. And that's probably what I'll replace mine with. The real Josh Gill uh, tips for keeping a curious and adventurous cat off the counters. I got no fucking answers. Ollie survives and goes anywhere he wants. Chloe will not jump to the counters because that girl thick. That girl thick. She's not gonna make it. She's also old. She's like she's like ten. Zach Anderson seventy four. Would you consider writing throws programming? Yeah, I did it. I wrote it in a book. Throwing lab training lab. Um, it's out there. So check those out. Do I want to write day to day programming for throwers? Nope. I don't have time to do a good job at it, so I'm not going to charge people. Dirty bulk. Love the podcast. Any future plans with powerlifting? Not really. Um, but I, I get the occasional itch to compete and stuff, and so who knows? I mean, do I think I'll make it onto the platform at some point in my future? Yeah, for sure. Like 100%, I will, I will do something again competitively, so... But am I training for anything currently? Nah. Real quick, take a pause. Mark Bell Slingshot. If you're not familiar, Slingshot is one of the best devices ever. I use it to build my biggest bench and was able to slap some elbow sleeves on and hit a 200 kilo bench last year at 238 pounds. So, that's my best. I did it. And also use a slingshot. So one of the ways I really liked using a slingshot product is whatever I'd work up to for my working sets that day during training or anything else. Slap a slingshot on man and then uh, would be able to hit that for some reps and really get some nice overload work that made a big difference for me. So that's what worked. That's what I recommend. And if you want to, head over to Mark Bell Slingshot. Use code UMSO. Save yourself 15%. Get yourself knee sleeves, wraps, belts, all types of good shit. They got it all. Check it out. Mark Bell Slingshot. Mark Bell Slingshot.com. Go down so. Save 50%. I didn't mean to turn this into some weird ASMR thing. <laughs> Hope someone out there is getting moderately erect listening to it. 
Is that how ASMR works? Is it a sexual thing? Seems like on some level. Hence that most of the people who are really good at it are also attractive. I've noticed that. That seems to be a correlation. Do, 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 do. A couple more questions. Walburn, Corey. Walburn, Corey, do you have any other plans for another hot, cold tub in the new place? Yeah. So once we get the backyard kind of built out and we fence off both sides and put uh, this garage, the plan is that the garage will be kind of a three-sided. So garage door, walls, and then open toward the house on the back side. And inside of there, I'll end up putting a hot tub. I'll put another cold tub freezer set up and have a bit of a, a chill area out there, just somewhere that we can kind of all hang out in a nice outdoor space. Um, I don't know if I'll set up a home gym per chance, but there may be something out there. I'll probably end up renting. I'll probably end up at some point moving out of nine for nine and renting a space closer to where we live and filling it with equipment so that we can photo shoot and do videos and do more stuff like this for you guys from a bit more of a controlled environment. So that's, that's really the plan kind of going forward in the future is being able to create better content for you guys and have a dope place to chain and train and recover as it does make me feel better. It's not just for use. Uh, another question regarding the same shit. Grieve K. Mc... Mc Your name, bro. Geirvik Markover. Geir McIver. Geir Mc... Geir Vic... Geir Vic McIver. Ugh. What's your take on cryotherapy? Should you do ice bath showers every day? Uh, I do think cold showers aren't a bad thing to do every day. Um, cryotherapy, as far as just going and standing in the uh, cryo chamber thing, I don't think it does much. Um, I don't think you're going to see any changes in blood work. I don't think you're going to see hot and cold shock proteins. I think you're going to get a nice topical effect that helps some inflammation and things like that. But do I think that you're getting anything of the real benefit that hot or cold therapy does? No, I don't. Um, you can't see any markers for that type of stuff in blood work from what I've seen. Um, not saying it doesn't feel good or help recovery. I'm just saying it doesn't do as much as what the other would using like a cold tub. So ice baths I think are fine and I would use every day, maybe more than once. Eggs Benji. Ew. Just think of someone's dog covered in hollandaise sauce. Now that you own a gym and you have a garage gym, which one did you prefer? Garage gym, 100%. I, I, I very much prefer training by myself. I very much prefer being in the garage gym. I very much prefer having my own space, uh, especially right there at my house. Um, I loved training that way. I never minded training by myself. I, I still prefer an empty gym by myself to just do my thing. Um, all in all, yeah, hundred percent. I, I will have another garage gym at some point or another gym space. That's private to ours, which is basically a garage gym. So that's it. There's all of our questions. Thank you guys for watching. Thank you guys for listening. Let me know what you think about the video stuff. If you guys dig it and, um, awesome. Thank you guys for, uh, for listening as always check out our sponsors. We have, here we go. We have Slingshot, Mind Bullet, Hybrid Performance Method. We have Eat Right Foods, Power Dot. We have Hate Brand Goods. Oh, no. Power Dot, Hate Brand Goods, Habit Coffee, Slingshot, and Mind Bullet. Thank you guys for listening. Use Cut Umso at any of those awesome places. Pick up great stuff. They really do help us. And we are taking off on the road starting next week. So all of the podcasts you'll be hearing from then on will be out of town and on the road, man. So excited about that. Excited to have some new friends and new guests on the show. Thank you guys for listening and uh, spread hate. Always party.